Today I'm continuing my retro reviews of Master List, the fifth episode of the first season, The Moose. So to begin with, this is probably the first episode that's really addressing a actual serious issue, that being slavery. That's pretty much what it is. The, the titular Moose, and Sun Lee, I think is the character's name if I recall correctly, is basically a, a staff sergeant comes in who had bought her for her, from her family to be her pers- his personal servant. Hawkeye takes offense to that immediately, like, once he figured out what was going on. He had a bad feeling about the sergeant he described earlier, but yeah. But just to show, I think, how much this is, the fact that the staff sergeant did that, he put on his full dress uniform to attempt to order the sergeant to release her. Doesn't work. And so what does he try to do then? He tries to buy her freedom. Takes a while to do that. But pretty much once he makes that mind, that's what he's, de- he's doing. He's of course supported by Trapper and also Spirit Chocolate Jones. He, we, I forget what episode he finally drops away in because they really don't do much with his character. And I really wish they did more with his character in this episode because Spirit Chocolate is a black American. And perhaps maybe if they, this was being written by you know, the, the writers from seasons 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, from the later seasons, they might have actually done that. But this is a still early match. They haven't found the footing yet. And they missed a, they still had some good commentary on the issue, but they totally missed it. They didn't seem to really bring in one character's, you know, experience. Yes, Spirit Trek wouldn't have had any personal experience, but there's a good chance he, there would have been stories in his family and he would have had, had something interesting to, to contribute. But they really don't do anything with it. It's missing potential, in my opinion. Now, would they have done it well is a totally different question. And given the time frame and the fact that the writing room was probably all white, it's actually probably better that they didn't because they would probably have screwed it up somehow. And made it worse than them just barely, not even barely, not addressing it at all. So, at least I can give them credit for realizing they couldn't write about it. I can't write about it, I just think it would have been nice if they could have. Now bring in somebody who could write about it, who has the knowledge or the experience to do so, but they didn't. But anyhow, going back, so Hawkeye's main mission is to basically get Sunny's freedom to her. He, he does, they basically, they um, cheat at Poco in order to win her off of the staff sergeant, and then the rest of the episode is trying to convince her that you're free now. You don't have anything you owe to us. And the first time they try to send her to family, she runs back to the king. And then, so what they decide to do is basically treat her as a person, help her learn to stand up for herself, to um, self-actualize for herself. And it works. And now one thing I just want to address real quick before I continue recapping the story is that um, the character holds on to the houseboy, who I suspect, given the attitude in this episode they display towards, you know, mooses, that they are paying him. I just got that. That's the impression you get from here. But wasn't it perhaps that he sent to school in the States? I'm just saying. Continuity in early matches was always a bit hit and miss. But anyhow. How he actually then goes to get the head of, of her family. And so that way Arno can be kept and all that. So that way she doesn't feel like she's disgracing her family. And, and, and all that. Granted. The head of her family apparently is her young brother, who she's clearly probably at least five to ten years older than. And so in a more equitable balance in family relationship, she would have, she would be the older sister who's taking care of her younger brother. That's not really the case. And that can be partially assigned to the fact that I've, that, no, I'm not, Perfectly in knowledge of what Korean society was like in the 1950s, but every society has had its phases where, where males, regardless of age, are, su- are considered superior to women. And even in societies where that's no longer the case, there are still families, there are still people who hold to those you know, sexist behaviors, sexist values. So even if Let's say Korean society had moved beyond that, which I suspect it had, because the United States had to move beyond that at that time, and that's not saying that the U.S. It would actually be ahead of anyone, behind of anyone on any social issue. It's more of 
the fact that one society wasn't a, was you know a bit behind on gender relations means that other societies at the same time have a good chance of also not being equally equal on gender relations. That's what I'm saying there. But anyhow, the episode, well, before the episode ends, and she does stand up to herself from her brother, tells, basically tells him what's for. And this is after all the work they've done, helping her have, you know, self-confidence, self-actualization to see herself you know, more as a person rather than just a tool of her family, in a sense. I'm probably using the wrong words to describe that. But the episode ends where they get a letter from her. So apparently she goes, they, they find a home for her with a convent. And she's writing about all that. And so probably what's, um, probably the fun, one of the funniest jokes in my opinion in this episode comes where, you know, she, she says, um, what's the exact words? Well, basically, you know, as a Christian, I should know it. Not quite a prayer, but essentially, you know, you know, Something along the lines of God bless you, and but then she writes, I'm only saying that because the nuns want it because I am booted. That's literally what she says, or almost what she says, slightly paraphrasing. But I thought that was funny. Um, sure, I'm a Christian myself, and you would think that would some Christians probably will find a friend there, but I found it funny because you know she's respecting their beliefs, but she's also acknowledging her own beliefs as well. Which you know what, that is actually a very healthy attitude, in my opinion. You can respect other people's beliefs and acknowledge your own beliefs without being mean-spirited. I like that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's another joke at the end. I'm not the biggest fan of the joke. Well, Hawkeye jokes like, Hey, I miss out. I need a shave. Granted, I do like that how um, Trapper and Spirit Choker basically drag him into the shower to probably douse him even though he's not heading to the shower or whatever. No playfulness between them all. Um, no, showing that they are friends. And it's probably... Hawkeye was more jesting, but it's hard to tell sometimes if it's... Especially in the early episodes, he had more of a dry sense of humor. That summarizes the episode and also what I what the episode did say. Like I said, this episode, if it was later in the season, I think would have handled this topic better. Would have actually had some more poignant commentary. But I think the most important thing to take away is that this is really the first episode that is truly addressing a serious social topic. So that is where I'm going to end my review. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, have a good day, ignite, wherever you are. Have a good one. Bye! Thank you for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like as well as subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to stay up to date on my latest content. Also, be sure to check out the link tree in the description as well as any other links I have down there.